Good evening, everyone. As I told you earlier today, I was going to share with you a, an interesting number theory problem. So what you're about to see on the board, I want you to think about it. I want you to try and solve it on your own, and then I will share my solution with you. All right, so hopefully you could see on the board, show that if A is an element of the integers, if A is relatively prime to 5 and N is a positive integer, the number A raised to the 8N plus 3A raised to the 4N minus 4 is divisible. Uh, it should say here not divisible 100. It's divisible by 100. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with number theory or the terminology, the the term relatively prime is a somewhat pedantic way of saying that A is not divisible by 5. So I want you to pause the video and see if you can solve it. Let me know in the comment sections what you get. Uh, let me know if you're familiar with this type of problem in number theory. And then I will share with you the solution. All right, did you pause the video? So at this point, what we should show here is that if we're understanding divisibility uh, by 100, we also have to understand that divisibility by 100 also means divisible uh, by 4 and 25. And why is that? Why are we using 4 and 25? Well, remember, we're talking about relatively prime. In other words, 4 and 25 have no common factors other than 1. And they're, But their product, the product of 4 and 25, is 100. So what we could go ahead and do is we can label this number, this expression, as uh, a sub n. So if we label it as a sub n, we have a to the 8n plus 3a raised to the 4n minus 4. Well, the case is here. Um, well, when a, if, if we use 0 as n, it's a trivial matter because 8n, 8 to the, would, would be 8a to the 0, which would be 1. So we would have, in this case, in the first term, we would have 1 plus 3, right? a to the 4n would be 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 plus 3 minus 4, and that would give us 0. 4 minus 4. So it, it, it's really a trivial matter here. But, and, and it's also divisible by 100. So n, in either case, uh, n has to be, greater than or equal to 1. Always positive. Now, we have to show that a sub n is divisible by 4 and divisible by 25. So, really, we have, in reality, we, what we really have here is two separate problems. We have to show divisibility uh, in both cases. Well, Euler was a, I hope you have heard of him by now, if you're a serious math student. Euler was a very competent, a great mathematician. And he was once quoted as saying that uh, integers were made to be multiplied, not added. They were made to be multiplied rather than at them. So, but we can see that a sub n, the original expression here, is really a sum, not a product. But Euler, of course, was right. So how do you turn a sub n, our expression here, into a product? Well, really, there's only one way, by factoring and substitution. If we label a to the, uh, to the 8n, to the 4n, rather, as uh, t,
And we now get a sub n instead is equal to t squared plus 3t minus 4. And that's a familiar, that's a second degree equation. And it means that you can factor it. In this case, we can get t minus 1 times t plus 4. So the roots, the quadratic roots here are 1 and negative 4. And so now we could do what Euler would be pleased with, which is to show the multiplication. The t minus 1 multiplied by t plus 4. Remember, it's since we use substitution, this is representing a to the 4n minus 1 multiplied by a to the 4n plus 4. We now have a product. But, hmm, wait a minute. Let me digress for a moment because I don't really like what I'm seeing. So we can see that a sub n, got to think hard about it, but a sub n is a multiple of 4, right? And as we said, we have to show that it's also a multiple of 25. But, but there, these two numbers here, let's see if I can have room. These two numbers right here, they actually have a difference of 5, right? 1 and the negative 4. And therefore, 1 is a multiple of 5. The fact that 1 is a multiple of 5 is enough. So if we show that if we have two numbers here, if we show that one of them is a multiple of 5, so will the other one be a multiple of 5. And the product will be a multiple of 25. I'll return to that. But to show that the number is a multiple of 25, it will suffice to show that a to the 4n minus 1, this one right here, is a multiple of 5 because that implies automatically that so is a to the 4n plus 4 a multiple or divisible. But we have to back up. Let's back up and show that a sub n is a multiple of 4. So a sub n is a multiple of 4. Now, we have it written very nicely, but we can show an even nicer way of writing it. And I believe, you know, numbers are, a number is more beautiful the more it shows as a product of factors. So this a sub n can still be written as if we take the exponents here, we have a 4, 4n, a to the 4n. So we could do a to the 2n minus 1 multiplied by a to the 2n plus 1. And I'm going to keep this a to the 4n plus 4. Now, we have to show that this number is divisible by 4. So, in order for us to do that, we, we must then analyze what makes this number, a sub n, even or odd. So, if a sub n is odd, the factors 
we have here a to the 2n minus 1 and a to the 2n plus 1, well, those are even. So obviously, in that case, a sub n is divisible by 4, and we're done. But if a is even, then that a to the 4n, this right here, comes to our rescue because it's also divisible by 16. So that means it's also divisible by 4. And if I add 4, if I add a to the 4n plus 4, it's still going to be divisible by 4. So the first half of this job is done. And now we need to show it, that it's divisible by 25. And we can now use Fermat's theorem to show the following that I kind of alluded to earlier. All right, so we have to discuss Fermat's small uh, or little theorem, rather which says, and I had it written down for you all, a to the p minus 1 is congruent with 1, so we call that modulo, mod p. Another way of writing it is a to the p is congruent with a. So in the case that we have here, we have a to the 4n minus 1 equals 1 minus 1, well, congruent with 1 minus 1, congruent to 0, so that gives us modulo 5. And we also have a to the 4n plus 4 is congruent with 1 plus 4, which means 5. And that gives us modulo 5. So we're basically done. Because the given expressions, they, well, they told us in the problem that a is not divisible by 5. It's co-prime. And so that's why... Um, Fermat comes so much in handy here. And since the given expression, by the way, is divisible by both... Now we've shown that it's divisible by both 4 and 25. It must be divisible by their least common multiple, which is 100. So I hope this problem was interesting for you. I hope you've been exposed before to number theory. But this is what, uh, what it's all about. And, and many, many other uh, interesting problems. Uh, it's getting late, everyone, so thank you all, and uh, stay tuned for my Sunday message tomorrow.